Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss the muscles of the lateral compartment of the leg. Now again, this is a pretty simple compartment. There's really only two muscles here, uh, and those are peroneus longus and peroneus brevis. Now, uh, peroneus in this context is synonymous with fibularis. So sometimes you'll hear fibularis longus or peroneus longus. Same thing for the brevis counterpart. Uh, the tendency is for people who learned this a long time ago or people who learned it from people who learned it a long time ago, they tend to use perineus, but there, there's an attempt, a, an unofficial attempt, to change this to fibularis because it really just makes more sense because these muscles uh, are really both originating on the fibula, but they're also on the fibular side of the leg. And so fibularis does make more sense. Uh, but again, just to expose you to it, if you hear perineal or perineus, it means fibularis. All right, so here's these two muscles right here. Now, very quick inspection, you'll notice fibularis longus is the longer of the muscle. Both proximately and in a few minutes we'll see actually distally. And so, again, it's going to originate much farther up and overall just be a longer muscle. Perineus longus originates on the superior, or we could say proximal, two-thirds of the fibula. And then if we look at fibularis brevis down here in yellow, it's not going to originate until you really get to the distal half, the distal end of the fibula. So here's fibularis brevis. But in any case, they're both really going to run together and run down the lateral side of the leg. And that leads us to talking about these insertions right here. Okay, so let's take a look right down here at this picture. So we can see a bunch of nice muscles here. Again, in green right here, we have tibialis anterior. In purple, we have extensor hallucis longus. You can see this one's actually going toward the great toe, which makes sense if you've watched the previous video. This orange one is, going to, is extensor digitorum longus. You can see, again, it has those four tendons right there. Again, it makes sense. It's going to all four digits, so it's digitorum. These are the muscles of the anterior leg compartment. So if we go laterally, we have these two. These are really the continuations of fibularis longus and brevis. And again, longus is in blue, brevis is still in yellow. Now, what I want you to notice is that they're really going to pass more or less um, anteriorly to the calcaneus right here. Here's the calcaneus. In fact, right here, you can actually see the calcaneal or Achilles tendon. So you can see both muscles passing anteriorly to the heel, the calcaneus. But right about here, right where my mouse is, uh, there's a little bony projection, and it's called either the perineal tubercle or the perineal trochlea. And this bone really separates the two tendons. You'll notice that fibularis brevis goes on top of that tubercle or trochlea, perineal trochlea, and then fibularis longus actually passes underneath the perineal trochlea. Okay? That's important to know. Brevis is on top, longus is on bottom relative to that perineal trochlea. In any case, both of these tendons of these muscles pass uh, deep to these uh, retinacula right here. These are actually the perineal retinacula or lateral retinacula. Um, this one right here is the superior perineal retinaculum. This one is the inferior perineal retinaculum. And so this retinaculum, just like over here in the anterior compartment, it really just holds those tendons in place so that they don't bow out. All right. And we follow these tendons right here, and you'll notice brevis just inserts in on this bone right here. This bone is the base of the fifth metatarsal, so that's the insertion of perineus or fibularis brevis, the base of the fifth metatarsal. If you consider fibularis longus, you might say, well, maybe it's just inserting deep to that. No. Fibularis longus or perineus longus has an interesting course for its tendon. The tendon Again, it's going to pass underneath or inferior to that perineal trochlea, again, deep to the lateral retinacula, and it's going to cross underneath the plantar surface of the foot. In fact, it's going to go all the way under the foot and cross over to the medial side of the foot. In fact, these specific insertions of perineus longus are actually the base of the first metatarsal, and the medial cuneiform or cuneiform. So again, how the heck does this muscle insert all the way over on the toe side, that is the big toe side on the first metatarsal? It's because this tendon loops underneath the foot, underneath the plantar surface, and moves all the way across to insert on the first metatarsal 
and that medial cuneiform bone. Again, if we look here, here's our medial cuneiform. It's all the way over here on the medial side on the great toe side of the foot. Here's the base of the first metatarsal. Here's that medial cuneiform bone. And so again, if we were to kind of follow the path of perineus longus, it's going to go all the way over here, right? It's going to go right over here. Now brevis is going to insert right here, right here on the base of that fifth metatarsal. But longus is going to traverse under the foot, so you wouldn't be able to see it going over here. And then it's going to insert here on the, the base of the first metatarsal and the base of the medial cuneiform bone, all right? And collectively, these two muscles are in perfect positions to do these two motions. They're going to facilitate mostly eversion. Now, eversion is not a motion that we have a lot of range of motion for. Um, if you actually just lift your uh, foot up off the ground and try to do some eversion, you'll notice that it's a uh, very limited range of motion, extremely limited. And it's certainly not a movement that you tend to go to the gym to exercise. There are no eversion machines, right? So really, eversion is mostly a movement uh, that's important for things like gait, okay, and minor adjustments with stance during particular movements, okay. Um, you might see some alterations in inversion and eversion during a squat exercise. During gait, there's certain portions of the cycle where you might see more eversion, okay. So again, it's not really a movement where we intentionally do it for range of motion. There's fine adjustments that these two muscles make in the direction of eversion during functional activities like gait, okay. Now, in terms of their innervation, they're innervated by the superficial perineal nerve. Now again, the superficial perineal nerve is a branch of the common perineal nerve. So recall the common perineal nerve uh, loops around uh, just distal to the head of the fibula, and then it branches into two nerves. It branches into the deep perineal nerve, which is going to innervate the anterior leg compartment, and then the uh, superficial perineal nerve, which is going to innervate the lateral compartment, so these two muscles right here. In terms of their blood supply, they're innervated by the perineal artery, again, also called the fibular artery. Now, the fibular artery, we've covered this in a separate video, and I don't know if I have this readily available, uh, but again, actually, I do right here. The fibular artery is really a branch of the posterior tibial artery. So the fibular artery or perineal artery comes off of that and runs much more laterally down the leg where it's able to supply blood to these two muscles. Okay? Um, one thing I wanted to make perfectly clear about these two muscles and this compartment is that this compartment does not include perineus tertius or fibularis tertius. So recall in the anterior compartment video, we had a fourth muscle called perineus tertius. This is an often forgotten about muscle. It's so small, it likely doesn't contribute much to any movement whatsoever. Um, it's probably more of a proprioceptive muscle, but even though it shares the name perineus or fibularis tertius, this one is not in the lateral compartment. This one is in the anterior compartment, and again, notice it actually has the innervation of the anterior compartment, not the superficial perineal nerve, and not supplied by blood through the fibular artery. The perineus tertius, is innervated by the deep perineal nerve and supplied by the anterior tibial artery. Okay, so don't confuse that. That could be a pretty simple multiple choice question that people will screw up. That's not part of the lateral compartment. And then one more thing, uh, these two muscles can assist in plantar flexion of the foot or ankle plantar flexion. Again, the major plantar flexors by far are these uh, superficial muscles of the posterior compartment, in particular gastrocnemius and soleus. Uh, these are not going to contribute very much to plantar flexion, but they can assist. They're mainly everters. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the lateral leg compartment. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.